For the ninth episode in the crafting series, I want to discuss weld modifiers. Um, first of all, let's show you in game what the weld modifier would look like on a crafted item. This is my helmet, and as you can see right here, the prefix of the chosen, uh, which gives plus two to level of socketed AoE gems. It's a weld modifier, and uh, all the other modifiers that I have on my item are good modifiers. Let's show you how I crafted this and um, let's explain you uh, how veiled modifiers work. Uh, let's just go to jewelry for example. And uh, this is Craft of Exile. When you scroll down here you will see veiled modifiers. When an item is veiled, uh, let's show you on the trade site how a weld item looks, although I'm pretty sure you know. So a weld item means it has this line of text like this. When you have an item like this, you go to June. I'm not sure if I have a veiled item, but if I have one, I'll show you in game how to unveil it. I don't have one, but basically, uh, when you have an item that looks like this, you go to June, you hit Unveil, and it will give you three options. Um, I think it's better to show you in the emulator. So this will, would simulate what I would do at the June. When I right click unveil, it will give me three options right here. And I have to pick one. And uh, then the item, the modifier would look um, like it looks here on my... It would look like a normal modifier. It will, it will not look crafted like uh, the maximum life. So this is a veiled modifier. Uh, this modifier is right here are usually a better, uh, better, a bit better than the ones that can be crafted. Uh, but some, some of them, like for example, this uh, plus one minimum endurance charges also gives you so, uh, something extra. It's not just a bit better. It doesn't give you two power charges. It gives you the same one power charge, but now it also gives you one a power charge on kill. It gives you a little extra. Uh, you look at these modifiers and you <clears throat> you see uh, what they give and what you want. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind: remember that tag, because if one if either one of these is present, the other one cannot appear. Uh, and that is useful when you are trying to block it with the bench crafting. And uh, what I mean by that, if for example I have um, I have a ring. And this, um, you look here at, at, the, at the tag of the Veiled modifier. This has the tag of 6. When you go to the crafting bench, as you can see, the, uh, these modifiers right here, these four modifiers, all of them have the, ta the tag ID of 6. This ID, this number right here, it's 6. So, if my item would have a veiled prefix, like this, and I would craft, I would go to the bench and craft either one of these modifiers, like to, which has the number six, maximum mana, the reduced mana cost of skills, um, no matter how many times I try to unveil, the other um, the other modifiers in this group will not appear. This is bench blocking. This is benchcraft blocking 
for failed modifiers. I explained how this number right here works in other video and in this video today I want to go over it again because it's very important for failed modifiers. What this does when you um, when you are crafting one of these modifiers in the hopes that you want to uh, increase your chance of you hitting the right modifier it works like this. Let's open the calculator. So my total waiting for the weld modifiers is going to be 6800 6800 and let's just say that i want to hit either uh, maximum life or something else but let's just say that i want to hit maximum life on a ring this has a waiting of 1000 but since we crafted one of these uh, modifiers that have the number six as you can see right here, there are four modifiers with the ID of six. And three of them are going to be uh, 600 waiting. And the fourth one is going to be 1000 waiting. But they all share the same number right here. So that means we have uh, 2800 uh, minus... 6800 so we have now the the total waiting will be uh, 4000 so our chance right now because we removed from the pool of modifiers that can appear when hitting unveil we uh, removed a total of uh, 2800 waiting these three modifiers right here each weight 600 so it's 1800 and the last modifier that has the same tag number the same ID number, it has a weighting of 1000. So now the total weighting it's going to be uh, 6800 minus 2800, so it's going to be 4000. And if we are trying to hit the maximum, um, regenerate maximum life per second, it's, uh, it's going to be 1000 divided by 4000 times 3 roughly so it's going to be 75% chance of we uh, getting this modifier um, so if we go back to craft of exile because I crafted this modifier that blocks all the other three modifiers and a total of 2800 waiting when I'm going to hit unveil on this modifier there's a very high chance that I will get this maximum life regenerate mana per second. So this is basically how Veiled modifiers work in PoE. Um, to go back to my example with this helmet. Um, and I'll show you how to actually get modifiers, Veiled modifiers. First of all, I press Ctrl Alt and C. So this would copy the item. And if we go to the emulator and we go import. Now I can paste this item here in the, uh, in the Craft of Exile. And now let's just say that I remove this plus two to level of socketed AOE gems and um, also remove the maximum life. Usually you add a veiled modifier when you already have at, at least two good suffixes or three good suffixes or prefixes. Uh, for jewelry and uh, weapons is usually when you have two good prefixes, you add a third good prefix. Or sometimes in some cases you add, you have three good prefixes and you add a, a suffix. And the same goes for amulets, but uh, but usually this is how it goes. You have two or three good modifiers, and the fourth one is going to be um, a veiled modifier. When you are crafting jewelry, now I don't want to go too much into Eldish currency, but generally when you are crafting jewelry, you want to use H-Link. Because to add, um, to add veiled modifiers, there are two options. One, it's going to be... Uh, orb of chaos, uh, veiled chaos orb, uh, but this will reroll the modifiers. 
and the other one is going to be Aisling Vale. Um, what this Aisling Vale is, cool. when you go to June and show investigation, um, this NPC right here, this Aisling, if you, this uh, has level 3, so it has 3 stars under his name, and uh, it's in the safe house of research right here, and you are running uh, Katarina, you are running the mastermind. This is considered Tire 4 Aisling. And Tire 4 Aisling will do this. It will remove one modifier and it will add a Veiled modifier. But a Veiled Chaos Orb will reroll the modifiers, give you some new random modifiers sometimes, and it will also give you a Veiled uh, modifier. Now, let's show you how I crafted my um, my helmet. So I ended up with these uh, three good suffixes. Then I went to the benchcraft. I crafted suffixes cannot be changed. Then I used a Veiled Chaos Orb. And the reason why I used Veiled Chaos Orb... Um, usually you don't use Veiled Chaos Orb, but because... I have this uh, Eldritch, uh, my helmet is crafted with Eldritch modifiers, with Eldritch implicits. If it gives me full, suff full prefixes that are bad, I can remove them. But this is not true for uh, belts, for uh, accessories, for uh, weapons. This doesn't work. Or if your craft or if your um, armor is uh, influenced. Uh, meaning not seeing Exarch or Eldritch uh, or uh, Wither of Worlds, but Shaper, uh, Crusader. If you have Shaper, Crusader, you don't want to use a Veld Chaos Orb um, because it can give you two bad prefixes and the only way to get rid of them is going to be an Orb of Annulment and that can destroy your item. Uh, so in that case, if that was the case, you'd use an uh, Aisling Veil. And um, that would give you a Veil prefix like this. Now, the next step would be to go to the Craft of Exile. Um, and uh, block... Um, Block whatever, it's not uh, important. And uh, it will increase the chance of me hitting the plus 2 AoE. Uh... So, in this case, you would craft minions. This right here, plus 1, maximum number of raised zombies. It go to the crafting bench. And it has the tag of... Uh, 22. So you go to crafting bench and you look at 22. Plus on to maximum of number of raised zombies. Uh, it's a prefix. Like this. And it's a high chance that you will unveil plus 2 socketed AoE. Uh, and now you just go and craft life. Like this, and this is how I crafted my item. Um, one thing about the weld modifiers, you will see that some weld modifiers will have this, uh, and it will say NA. That means you cannot actually craft an item to have this tire of weld, because these modifiers only uh, appear on items that dropped from specific uh, NPCs from betrayal, and. Uh, to see which uh, NPC drop uh, that item, you go to POVDP, you go to modifiers, and uh, let's just go to the helmet of Dex. And it was called Physical Damage from Hits as Fire. You scroll down to the veiled uh, prefixes. Uh, physical damage taken from hits as fire. When you click it, here it says chorus. So uh, 
you can only obtain this by buying a veil item. Uh, this helmet. And you type here Corel's veil. This is the only way to obtain that modifier. If you really want this uh, modifier, physical damage taken uh, from hits as fire damage, you are stuck with crafting it. And the equivalent of this modifier is the one with number 15. So it's this modifier right here. Anyway, that was uh, that was all I had to say about uh, Veil modifiers. Maybe I'll, it's better explained when I'm going to talk about bench blocking. Um, but that was for this video.